So Constantina Malia, please mm -hmm. tell me all about yourself. Don't leave anything uh, out. Born in Vancouver, BC. My parents are both Greek. I went to business school, so I decided to build a brand. It wasn't going to be Julie originally, um, but Julie seemed a really good platform to start a luxury brand. And how did the name Malia come about? Where does that originate from? My dad's family supposedly was from Crete originally, so I started looking at books about Crete and found that the Palace of Malia on the north shore of Crete during the Minoan civilization was the first palace in, mod in history, in our human history, to be built as a place of beauty. Wow. And so that really spoke to me, and I loved the sound of the name, and so um, I took it. Called my cousin to talk to him, and he's like, you're never going to believe this, he goes. But he's like, this guy that came from Washington, D.C. is telling me that our family is from Malia. Oh he's my like, goodness. how did you do that? Yeah, it was pretty freak. It was freaked us all out. Yeah, and yeah. I want to hear about your collection. I actually have three collections. When I started, I started with gold. Um, of course, 18 karat gold because that automatically is fine jewelry. Mm -hmm. And after a year or two, gold started getting so expensive. I thought I should have something more of an entry point, so I started silver for men and women. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, the economy continued to decline. I had my collectors for the gold, but I still wanted a piece that could be something that bridged the introduction to my gold, so I started the Silk Road. So I have actually three different divisions. sitting in the middle of Central Park right I now. I know, it's so beautiful. And I'm sure you have a love affair with New York. I do. What would a typical New York client of yours gravitate towards? They love bold jewelry. My jewelry is not for timid. Uh -huh, yeah. You know, it's not light and dainty, which seems to be more commonplace. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, you know, there's, there's just a lot of work in them. And yes. like this is covered with story. So every little piece the leaves, the berries, the little crosses all mean something. Um, what about a city like Dallas? So the Dallas women, I think, um, love being strong and feminine. Like that's quintessential southerner. Yeah. Um, Parisians are very feminine. Um, Londoners, I'd say, are more edgy, so maybe the silver collection. So what sets your jewelry apart from all the other online boutiques? that are out there. If you go to the biggest trade shows in the world that are in Vicenza or in Las Vegas or in Hong Kong, my look is very different. Mm -hmm. And it always has been from the first day I started. And I think also that's because I built so much story into the pieces. I studied symbolism. So they became little totems, little talismans. They're almost good luck charms. They're an extension of your belief system. Each of your pieces has so much symbolism and a story behind it, and you can tell the passion and love that you put into um, your work. Thank so, you. Thanks it's so much. True. Thank you.